All right, the second style of or the second style of um, multiple choice questions are those ones that you've been doing lately that are like composition questions. And it will ask you like, what sentence should go here? Or what should be changed about this sentence? Those will be about a third of the multiple choice. And then you have three essays, right? The first essay is what's called synthesis. We'll come right back to that. The second essay is the rhetorical analysis. And the third essay is the argument essay. So for the argument essay, they are just like, you have to rely on your own experience to make this argument. And I gave you the analogy of like, you're at the dinner table with your like contentious father who wants to argue with you about gun control. And you just have to like pull all of your experience <laughs> into it and try and make your case, right? You won't have your phones to look stuff up. That's the argument style. The synthesis style of essay is maybe what you're more used to writing in an English class, which uses other sources to back up your claims. They'll give you a list of, uh, they'll give you about seven usually sources to look through. They'll be kind of short and they'll give you 15 minutes to read through this packet of sources. And as you're reading, you'll, be have, you'll have to determine the credibility of those sources and how you're gonna be using those in your argument. But the synthesis style of essay, which is what's called synthesis, it is still your argument. So they say this in the prompt, but they're very clear that your argument is central. So this is not where you're like sum summarizing all of the different sources, but you're using these sources to um, support your own ideas. But you'll have to kind of carefully choose what your ideas are, what your focus is, based on the sources that they give you. Because sometimes you might want to talk about something and they're not providing the sources for that. So they kind of give you a direction that you're supposed to go with it. So this is the first style of essay. So again, they give you 15 minutes to read and plan. And then 40 minutes, like usual, to write. And they tell you that you must use at least three of the sources. And you can use that through a combination of paraphrasing. Uh, I didn't spell that right, paraphrasing, summarizing. And quoting. Um, so you, this is kind of the information they give you for this style of essay. Any questions so far? Okay, cool. So we're going to look at an example of this style of essay. This one does not come from the AP test, but the ones on the AP test can be a little boring. Um, like the last one that we did was about windmills. Uh, one of them has been about whether or not we should get rid of the penny. One of them was about daylight saving time. They're like not the most exciting topics in the world. And a teacher at another school wrote this synthesis question, which will be far more exciting and it'll be a good introduction to this. What? Oh, they do. They do. Yeah, all the sources are like. Wow. Very clear on that. Okay, so this is very similar. They copied the format exactly, uh, well, not exactly, but almost exactly to what it, you'll see on the test. So it says the other day, Mark Tetrol and his girlfriend of six months, Carly McIntosh, got in a rather large fight because he went to a bonfire at his friend Matt's house without her. There are quite a lot of names here. So we've got Mark and Carly that are dating, and he went to Matt's house without her because Carly and Matt don't get along. So Mark knew she wouldn't have fun anyway. Now they seem to be getting along for the last two weeks, but since the fight, a lot of information has been revealed and now Mark needs to make a decision about his relationship. So read the following sources and accompanying contextual information carefully. Then in a letter that synthesizes from at least three of the sources for support, evaluate the most important factors Mark should consider when deciding whether or not to continue to date Carly McIntosh. And then it will give you the sources and it gives you it with letters and what they want you to call it. So we'll talk a lot about citing the sources in text, but you can choose which one you want to do. do you, cite, you can cite the letters or you can cite the names and it, either way works as long as you're consistent. So you guys, you found this right on Canvas. 
All right, so what I want you to do on this front page is I want you to rewrite the question in your own words. What is this prompt asking you to do? What do they want you to decide? You guys uh, at home, Lily and Mia, write it in the chat box. Just writing the question in your own words, what does it want you to do? Okay, this prompt is, uh, well, let me ask you. I just had you write it down. What is the prompt asking you to do, Nathan? Uh, it seems like it's not asking us to decide whether we should continue dating her, but like what the most valuable pieces of information are when he makes yeah. his choice. Yeah, I think that's right. I think though that if you're going to make this like order of things that he should consider, ultimately you should be saying whether or not they should stay together. Um, but you're right, you don't have to make that decision for him. And in fact, you're supposed to use your good rhetorical skills to try and lead him to a certain decision without maybe saying what it should actually be, right? Um, every once in a while, the AP test will tell you to write a letter. I am hoping, we haven't had one of those in like 10 years, so I'm hoping they won't do that again because that's not a part of the curriculum. But this one does tell you that it should be in a letter. So you're kind of like addressing it to our friend Matt. Mark, our friend Mark. <laughs> Okay, usually the sources are a lot more intense than this. Uh, they have, um, you will see one of these soon, but they will be like longer, little, you know, academic bits of information. This one, because it's fun, it's not so academic. So instead of giving you 15 minutes to read through all of this, I am going to give you seven minutes to read through all of it, and that will be enough time. This is your document. You can write all over it, whatever you think is going to help you.
you raise your hand if you've ever used them. Okay, let's process all this good information though. All this intense information about Carly, Matt, and Mark. I'm looking up the IH. Wait, we are? I feel, uh, I mean. The, yeah, oh, I'm yeah. Cool. Like, I just feel like. You're combing this through very, all this evidence. Yes, it's very top and forth, this info right here. <laughs> All right. Reasons to stay. Isn't that like that's gotta be some sort of like lifetime movie title? Yeah. Lifetime. Reasons to leave. Okay, we're gonna kind of make a pro and con list for Mark here. Um, so what are some based on this evidence, what are some reasons that you think that Mark and Carly should stay in this relationship? Oh, there's got to be some. Okay, so but let's leave like that. So that does not sound like okay, but obviously he likes spending time with her. So let's yes. leave that as a pro. I'm going to add one. I think Anna is predatory. I think as soon as Mark breaks up with Carly, this sounds so stupid for me to talk about this. No, I thought this was that. Yes, as soon as Mark breaks up with Carly, Anna's going to swoop in, and Anna looks like trouble to me. Like, she does not seem like someone you'd want to be in a relationship with right after another one where you thought you loved the girl. So I'm going to put that up there as a reason. Are there any other reasons that they should stay together? Wow, we really know we yeah. I kind of feel like Matt is like pushing him towards her too. Mm -hmm. So Matt seems motivated in the way that maybe we shouldn't totally trust him. Maybe there's a good reason that Carly and Matt dislike each other. Any other reasons that we could say? Yeah, I think. Oh, it seems like Matt's kind of trying to put a lot of effort into it. Like, this is a lot of things with Carly and Carly. And so, I think it's like, well, that's what we have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's that um, sunk cost theory, which, like, you've already spent so much time on this. So, if you break up, it's going to show that all of that time was wasted, you know? <laughs> Lily said, is this how people think Gen Z's text? Hello, <laughs> I think it's how whatever English teacher that wrote this thing. So, yeah. So Isn't bad. it? Like, are you right tonight? Just T O N I T. I feel like I'm reading Shakespeare, but in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That is what it is. It's reverse Shakespeare. We you... have a full play written in reverse Shakespeare. No, that would be so bad. <laughs> You guys should update this for me. Like, at, this is the first time yeah, I use this. No, yeah, you should update it so that it's like 2021. Um, because it's, this might have been how people, how gen, like, gen, millennials sex is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, any other reasons that they should uh, stay together? Okay, then let's go over here to reasons to leave because I bet there's lots of these. So, what are some reasons that you think they should break up? Christian? Um, Carly seems entitled to him and she doesn't want him spending time with his friends, even though she's going to protect him. Okay, possessive and then hypocritical. Why does Carly make you uncomfortable? Because of the frequency that she sees, and she just like treats his secrets like so fun. Yeah, yeah, that's that. Yeah. I was like, you said she was the one who was cheating. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That adds on to it. I actually kind of called that. She says, yeah, she's going to have very long with that. She's yeah. like a double date. Uh -huh. And then literally, I like, love it. So there's like multiple rumors. It's not just one, it's like multiple rumors that say that she's cheating. Mm -hmm. And her secret, secret hashtag. That was so fun. Maybe that's just. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Maddie. Um, well, 
Welcome back, Tia. Cooper. She went through six guys in the last year rebounding yeah. after what she had heck? a relationship for three years. That's a that bad sign. That's a bad sign. That is what I was going to say. Like he's, she's got, what was it? She's not going to miss him when she's on her hot girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> she's just having fun. She's on her hot girl. Got it. Most of trying to ride those points. Okay. Yeah. One way to phrase it. Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong with him having a platonic relationship with Anna. Like, mm -hmm. like on both ends, it seems to be platonic, and it's not like. So maybe like a little too jealous then? Well, that Instagram post was with that. Yeah. Was that? No, that was Mark. Oh, that was Mark. Yeah. Oh, I thought Anna. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I read that one. But it's Mark. My bad. Yeah. I know the hashtag said she loves me. It's a picture of Mark, but it's Anna's Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Anna posted. It's a great picture. It is a good picture. It's not a platonic. No. 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 But it's platonic. Platonic means that you don't actually want to date them. Yeah. It's love without like lust. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I feel like. Sure, there's a lot of drama, but I mean, look at these games she's playing. She's oh, like, okay. obviously, you care about Matt more than me. Have fun tonight. Talk to you later. What BS is that? Oh, uh, okay. Her, and her secret <laughs> secrets, she's just beating around the bush and playing dumb games. So you yeah, feel like she's like being it. inauthentic. Yes. She's being fake. I don't know what it's called. There's a word for it. Um, let me see what Lily said. Hi. Lily said, based on texting, they're both not mature enough to be in a relationship. And if they didn't mention the grades before, I thought they were in sixth grade. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Sure. Yes. Both. Yes. Let's make sure we uh, say both not mature. Okay. Yeah, take. Uh, it seems like they also don't really trust each other. Because mm. Mark asks what uh, he's going to do when she's not there. And then he's like, why does it matter? Yeah. Yeah, like they're all ready to see that they're like yeah. cheap, right? Yeah. yeah. Emily? Oh, same thing. Okay, Christian. Yeah. Um, Mark is really busy, and that just seems like putting a relationship into the mix is just not the same. Yeah, it's gonna stress him out. Yeah. And the other thing, when you look at the schedule, she's not as busy, but it kind of seems like when he might have time, she doesn't. Um, maybe not. Maybe she's gonna study for the test, and he has like youth group. In my head, I was like, oh, youth group, you can cancel that. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's rude. Seriously, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay, but yeah, Mark is the one who's very much more more busy than yeah. And she's kind of hesitant to bring Mark to the one that is quite the direct. Well, that's just six that's to win. Like, because it's a six Oh, it's a six to win. Oh, so maybe that goes over here and the reasons to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other <laughs> points that we want to make about them? <laughs> um, okay, tell me about these like statements that people have made. Um, so we got through like that they she might be cheating and that seems suspicious. It, it, the fact that he really likes spending time with her is great, but after one week of dating seems suspicious. <laughs> That, that just back up the whole not, not, not mature enough. Okay. Christian? Uh, so Danielle's incredible story, and Sarah was who Carly was spending the night with, with the whole secret, secret thing. Yeah. So. Good point. I didn't catch that. All right. So Danielle says the incredible story. Has an inside scoop from uh, Carly's BFF. Doesn't she call her her BFF? Um, yeah, okay, good. So she's an accurate source. She's a credible source for accurate school drama, but she's also over dramatic. How do we feel about her as a source? Not take it as a grain of salt. Yeah. She's like, that could okay. possibly happen, but at the same time, she might just want to get the drama out of it. So it's like, keep it in the back of your head that that might be a possibility, but don't take it seriously until you get anybody else to say it. Okay, so like the over dramatic part means that she might be sort of spreading things for her own sort of benefit, but the credible source for accurate school gossip 
credible source means she's going to credibly re repeat what she said. She won't just make stuff up, but she's reporting on school gossip, which is notoriously not credible, right? So there's this all these layers to what Danielle's saying. Also, reading what she's saying it seems impossible to me, but yeah. Um, yeah also, with the Zach part, why mm -hmm. is Carly like telling him her business when it's obvious that he likes her? Oh, so interesting. She's that guy around. <laughs> yeah, to add to the six. <laughs> no, go into a shoe store not wearing shoes. <laughs> Good point, Tate. Good point. <laughs> uh, How about Mr. Fritas? Are we going to pay attention to what Mr. Fritas says? No, I don't. No. I like that guy. <laughs> Dude, that is such a, what kind of logic is that? You shouldn't date at any age unless you're getting ready to be married in a, in a year. That seems so, so, I think you guys are kind of right about Mr. Freitas then. Like, he seems to be in some kind of bitter old person yeah. place where he's like, yeah. I like him a lot. But, I like him a lot. What was that, Anya? Uh, oh, is it really? Yeah. Did Mr. Freitas write this? Oh, you're right. Adapted by Tim Freitas. <laughs> you're right. Well, Tim seems a little bitter. Um, Tim seems to also be discounting maybe some of the good parts about dating in high school. What might be some reasons for dating in high school? Though? Okay, good. So like dating, dating experience. Yeah, if the first time you're dating, you're like, I'm ready to get married, that's going to be a problem. Be the way you either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a problem, right? <laughs> 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 Maddie is okay. You're going to have fun with all of this. Seriously, I die. Okay, good. Have fun. <laughs> Not serious. Hey, okay. <laughs> Nathan, you ready? Yeah. Um, oh. You meet a lot more people in high school than you do after high school. I mean, like maybe in work and stuff, but like with high school, you meet new people every semester. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a bigger, a greater dating pool. You yeah. can choose more fishing and all that. Yeah. Okay. Wait for better relationships. What? Because you're going to be more mature, and so you're not going to get hurt as much, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, dating earlier is a good way to like see what traits you like in people or what traits you want in a date. Okay. So learn about yourself. Okay. Now, why could this also be a reason that they should break up? Three be reasons. Because if they break up, then both of them have a chance to go and find themselves and help them. Good. So a chance to go gain more experiences. If things are not working out perfectly with this high school girl, go ahead and find a different high school girl. There's lots of them, you know? Um, anything else that we want to add up through the board about reasons to stay or reasons to leave? I think we basically covered it. You guys at home? Yeah, okay. So now go back to what the question is asking you. It's asking you the priorities, right? There is no way that you can talk about all of this in one paper. I think that'd be a pretty messy paper and you only have 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it kind of feels like everyone's on the leave side. Is anyone like saying like, no, stay together at this point? I think they should keep it going for a little bit, but then I think, I think maybe they, they should just have a good little yeah. talk. Yeah. Have a talk. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Okay, so we've got some variety in, in how this is going to how this is going to play out. But look. Since most people are kind of over here, let's start to prioritize. So out of this giant list of things and considering what the, the sources that you have here to use, what are you going to say should be his number one consideration when making this choice? This one? Did you find out more if she's cheating? Okay, so for yours about having a conversation, this is gonna be number one. Yeah. Okay, good. What what else do we think? Yeah. I personally think that what you're saying is just like 
There's so much unnecessary drama and beating around the bush. And he said, she said, I think yeah. we'd be a lot happier just letting that all go. So you're saying that playing games, yeah. it's too much. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah. Just let it go. Okay? Yeah. I think he should let it go right now because if he waits and tries to like prove that she's king or not, she seems like the type of person who would go out of her way to end him and make everyone think that he's like the worst person yes. possible. So you're she saying is. this one seems to be the most important one. Him, her being maybe this together. That her being possessive is a sign, a sign of her like craving drama and yeah. that it's going to get dangerous. So you're saying just let it go now because if you keep going along this road, it's going to just get worse and worse. Yeah. Okay. Come on. You say lack of trust is the most important. Why is that one the most important, you think? Um, like, I don't think it's enough to, uh, like, be considered to, like, part of the reason why they're, be, like, bigger doing this is, like, because they don't trust each other enough mm -hmm. to make them, like, not worry enough. Um, Okay, so then it's like instead of worrying about having this conversation, just notice the way that you feel like you need to have that conversation and handle it. Yeah, Cooper? I was thinking about doing the immaturity because if you talk about the immaturity, you can talk about how she's playing games, being possessive. You can just cover a lot of the bases yeah. under the fact that they're not mature yeah. enough and ready for that relationship. So yeah, I think good. So that if you choose one of these things to be the top priority, other things in here start yeah. to fit under that umbrella, right? So if you're really thinking a lot about this cheating question, then you probably want to think about this question and the rebounding habit and the fact that she's not going to miss him at all. Like you're probably going to group those things together. But if you're thinking more about the playing game stuff, you're going to be thinking more about the lack of maturity. You're going to think about the jealousy. Um, and you're going to think about maybe this one, like just let it go and then you can have more experiences, mm -hmm. you know? So you, you choose, I think for this prompt, it makes sense to choose your top priority. And then like Cooper said, try to think of other things that kind of fit under the umbrella of that top priority. So I'm going to give you a second here on the front page where you've got lots of room. I want you to write a thesis statement for this one. It works just the same as an argument paper. I think for you, this one, uh, I think the way it's worded is a little strange. Why don't you guys say, evaluate the most important factors? Why don't you say, I'm going to evaluate that to come up with a conclusion? You should break up with Carly for these reasons, or you should have a talk with Carly for these reasons. I don't like the way Tim worded it. Tim. <laughs> oh, I mean, Mr. Freitas. <laughs> you think these are real kids? And yes, he had it out one day in Mark and Anna <laughs> and Matt's class. <laughs> I don't know anything about your guys' dating lives. Come on. <laughs> I do that. I do that. <laughs> Or I just want them to like each other. <laughs> Your English teachers have done that. I know that. I didn't do that in this class. Stop looking around. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Always, yeah. Next uh, always next to Ben. <laughs> I'm going to do a seating chart for next class to see you guys can be thinking about it. That would be so funny. <laughs> you should change the seating chart every day. Yeah. Just oh. and make it a picture. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have few enough kids in this class that I can literally like pair you so that there's space. <laughs> 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 Financial literature on the first day of class. 
Sitting next to, next to someone nice? Uh, no, I love that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like, I don't, I'm not here to get married. <laughs> but the coffee was so tiny. I was like, in a little crevice, like, no, I didn't know. It was just do. too common for me. <laughs> All right. Right. You're writing a thesis statement about whether or not they should stay together and why. So you're thinking of your top priority and kind of fashioning your thesis around that top priority. I'm going to do it too. I tried to make mine as teachery as possible. And I said, you should make, you should break up with Carly immediately because you are both too immature for this kind of social nuance and you should be focusing on your studies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, does everyone have a, a working thesis now? Almost. Okay. okay. So, now that you have a thesis statement, you want to think about the order of your ideas in the same way that we have been doing for a long time now, where you're breaking it apart logically, right? So I'm going to give you just a minute, because you've done this so much, to try and break that apart logically and give it parts to the paper. So where you create a little paragraph outline of what you're going to talk about first. So I've just broken mine down. Dating in high school is complicated because there's so many people involved. It's hard to navigate everyone's emotions. Carly and Mark especially are bad at it. So you should focus on your school and your own self and you should break up. That's my story. And we're doing, we're breaking this down so that you can see where you would start to use both. Yes. 
Should I transition with kind of a like building off of what I just said, or should I just have them as separated points and let them assume that it's just building off? You should be able to write a transition that doesn't announce that it's a transition. Okay. So like over here where I say dating is hard because it's complicated because of how many people are involved, that's going to that's going to naturally transition into the point that because there's so many people involved, it's going to be hard to deal with everyone's emotion. And then that should naturally go into the point of this guy, these guys are especially bad at that particular aspect. So if you have a really good logical structure, your transition should be really natural that way. <laughs> Trying to tell someone to break up. Um, okay. All right. Um, let me show you this next part then. So now I've got all of these different sources. Some of them are more credible than others. And next time when we actually have real sources, we'll talk a little bit more about source credibility. But I'm going to kind of decide now where I can fit these sources into my argument. It is important to know your argument first and then try to put your sources in that. Because if you try to format your argument according to the sources, you're just going to get a list of evidence and there isn't going to be that connecting thread that we're looking for in a good argument paper. So when I'm going through this, I'm going to need some kind of source or two or three that proves that dating in high school is complicated because of how many people are involved. Which one of these, which of these sources do you think is going to help? Okay, I think source B will help too because everyone's involved in everyone's business. Hmm? And D. Okay, and what's D about? Uh, the teen reasons dating in high school is overrated. Ah, good. Okay, so let's do source D and source B for paragraph number one. How about paragraph number two, that it's hard to navigate everyone's emotions. I'm gonna do for sure the Instagram source for that one. Yes, you will work. Okay, cool. And then I wanna show that especially Carly and Mark um, seem pretty bad at this. And I can repeat sources if I want to. Where would you say that they seem the most immature? Was that the text messages? Okay, so source E again. Is there any other ones where they seem really immature? Well, I think source F would be seen that way, you know. Like, yeah, I feel like Anna is feeding into the drama of that one and being immature. You also could do source C for that one. Okay, good. Okay, and then over here, so you should focus on your yourself and on your studies and all of that. Uh, I'm going to use Tim. For that is uh, yeah like tim said so and i'm going to use their schedule for that because mark has such a busy yeah. schedule i want him to focus on that yeah i was going to say for number three go back to b and talk about her dating record yeah we got a lot of sources in here we we'll want to choose which ones are going to work the best and then break up i'm not going to have a source there because i uh this is my conclusion yeah exactly okay so when i look at this I've got multiple sources that speak to all of these points. Um, do I have anywhere where I am addressing some of the counter arguments? Because I feel like this one doesn't have strong counter arguments, but I should probably have some place where I can acknowledge that dating in high school can be fun. Yeah, Nathan? I feel like you can talk about Saturday on the schedules. Mm -hmm. uh, this whole surprise date for her. Yeah. I'm going to talk about Saturday in my intro. I think that's going to make for a good hook. Talk about that. And then that'll tackle that side of the counter argument. Great cool. Okay, so which source is that? Okay, cool. So what I want you to notice is that for all of my paragraphs, I'm using multiple sources here, right? Um, that is ultimately what you're trying to get to in these synthesis papers. You are, here's the analogy that I like to use with these papers. You are entering into a conversation with this uh, particular prompt. That makes a whole lot of sense because everybody's like actually having conversations here on the page. Um, but you're basically entering into this conversation and you're like, okay, Carly says this, 
Danielle says this and Matt says this. And I'm gonna come into this conversation and say, I hear what all of you are saying. Here's how we could maybe think of what Danielle and Mark are saying together. And we can kind of think of what Matt and I are agreeing with, you know, and you're like the facilitator in the conversation, but ultimately you're the one who wants to be heard the loudest. So ultimately you're like, and also all of you are a little bit wrong and I am the most, the most right. And let me explain that to you. So you're both using what these other people have said to bolster up your own argument, and you are finding ways that they are different from your argument and different from each other's argument. Does that make sense? Okay, I want you to start plugging in the sources into your outline then. Where could you use at least, not all of them will be two, but where can you find sources that are going to back up your points? Uh, really, that's a really good piece of statement. I know. You're not going to have to uh, write this whole paper, obviously. Maybe that wasn't obvious, but definitely not going to be writing about Mark and Charlie. You know, I have a, I have a friend who uh, was the only single. Hi, do you guys want to find friend Brian? No. Hang on, let me pause the recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so we are going to write a paragraph now from this essay. So I just want one paragraph. I would just choose the uh, your first body paragraph if I were you. Um, if they, if you have multiple sources, I want you to choose one of these paragraphs where you have multiple sources that are going to back up your argument. Does everyone have one? Are we writing this like a letter? Yeah, let's let's or like a formal. Let's. I want to do it like a formal, actually, because it's never a letter on the okay. I've never seen one that's a letter on the So, um, let's do it like a formal essay. Mar uh, Mark and Carly should break up with these reasons, you know. Um, so I want you to just write one of your body paragraphs, not mine, yours. Right, one of your body paragraphs, and. I, I'm kind of using this as a bit of a pretest type thing where I can kind of see how you are using the sources and then I can decide what we need to work on. So do your very best, write your very best paragraph using sources. Hey, did you point out that her Twitter profile picture is egg? Uh, we didn't. Yes, we didn't talk about her egg. Ben is asking me important questions. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's that egg that got famous. <laughs> we'll see. And then I was wondering on Anna's Instagram if because her Twitter handle was dancing, whatever. Yeah, dancing and, 
prancer, dancer, or whatever. But it's a different handle. So is it the same one? Because this one is Dancing Queen. Um, yes, Lily and, and Mia, you guys do this in a Google Doc because you're going to turn it in for me. And in fact, just turn it into the assignment that I added you to where you found this packet, the class recording assignment for today. Just submit it there. Okay, so you guys are writing it on this line piece of paper I gave you. You're get, writing one paragraph that uses at least two of the sources. Yeah. I think it's classy. 